Welcome to Corcoran Today for August 3rd, 2019. This is the weekly recap show we do every Saturday where we break down some of the biggest news that's happened recently, plus look back at stories from the past week and answer your questions about them, and look forward to what you can expect next week. If you want to learn more about these stories, in the show notes down below, I'll put a link to each story, or you can rebound for yourself, come up with your own opinions, I'd love to hear from you. If you are new here, hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, Helps us a lot because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we're doing, and hopefully we can help you break free from the high-cost cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. Well, let's dive into it, because there's a lot happening right now in the world of core cutting, and you have been sending us a lot of questions. Uh, first though, don't forget, Amazon's Black Friday pricing on the Fire TVs is back at Best Buy. You can get Fire TV starting at $14.99 this weekend. This is a limited time deal. You have to hurry to get this. Link in the show notes down below if you want to get in on it. Again, if you have the extra 10 bucks, you may want to think about getting a Fire TV Stick 4K. Um, but hey, for 14 bucks, stock up maybe some stocking stuffers there. All right, uh, let's get into the news because we got a lot of ground to cover. Uh, this week, a lot's happened in the world of IPTV services. You've probably seen these ads, you know, 2,000, 3,000 or more channels for 20 bucks a month. All the, uh, all the NFL Sunday tickets, HBO, Showtimes, all that stuff for 20 bucks a month. Well, as you can expect, this grabbed the attention of some of the content owners as IPTV just means internet over, um, or TV over the internet. But a lot of people kind of put that side by side with piracy now because a lot of these services advertising as, per, or as IPTV or as your grandma would say, too good to be true. And now Ace has won another lawsuit in this case. So Ace has successfully won their lawsuit over the IPTV service Set TV Now, which was quite successful and actually at its peak when it was shut down was larger than Fubo TV at the time. And uh, the judge has agreed to a permanent injection, mostly because the, IP, the Set TV owners stopped responding, stopped showing up, stopped paying their lawyer, who was dismissed from the case, awarded um, $7.6 million in damages to Ace, which is a conglomerate of companies including Amazon, Netflix, uh, Disney, Fox, Sony Pictures, Columbia, Universal, Warner Brothers, and more, are all targeted them. Uh, this is on top of the $90 million that Dish already won in their lawsuit against Set TV, and in addition to money that Dish won against, an I, against a reseller of Set TV. So they're even going after resellers. This is not the end of it though. This is a precedent case. This allows them to now turn and go after others. And Dish already took their victory against that TV and has been doing that. Uh, this week they targeted multiple additional IPTV services, and maybe it's six uh, different IPTV services. Still trying to break down the whole lawsuit. And this is on top of ones they had already filed in the past. So Dish is really racking this up. And a lot of people have been asking is how can Dish sue IPTV services? Wouldn't people like Sony and all of them have to do it? Well, Dish actually owns exclusive rights for some content here in the United States. There are certain channels on Dish no other service offers. When those channels are retransmitted, it's in violation of Dish's agreement to be the exclusive distributor of that content here in the United States. Dish has successfully already used this um, as their basis for their case going forward. Dish has even so, um, sued hosting companies who haven't responded uh, to DMC takedown requests and more. Look for lawsuits targeting IPTV to become more rampant and more common. This is a big new market. In the past when piracy happened, it was free, right? You had BitTorrent and all these other stuff, just download it. Increasingly, piracy services are turning into legitimate looking streaming services. Um, and because they realize, hey, it costs us money to have a server, right? There's physical money involved in running these servers and uploading the content and more. Let's charge people, charge them less than they would get from a legitimate service, but we'll charge them, we'll make a profit because we're not paying the content owners for that content. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens going forward. A lot of these companies are out there um, desperately looking for a way to um, put a stop to this because there is a large number of people using these IPTV services and more. And there's a large number of people, just average people signing up for these affiliate programs to sell it. Be careful, 
Dish did win a substantially large judgment against one particular ones of these resellers. And if they find you, they're probably going to do the same to you. Uh, Dish has even started to threaten uh, lawsuits against IPTV subscribers. Again, a lot of people say, well, it's legal to stream, right? You're not downloading it. That's not something that's necessarily hold up in court yet. So just be careful with this kind of stuff. You're an adult. I'm not going to tell you not to do it. You know the risks. You know the dangers. Also remember, when you hand over your credit card information to these people that aren't necessarily legal business, what they do with it is not something that um, you necessarily may know about. So just be very careful about these services that sound too good to be true. I, I can't guarantee you this idea that because you're streaming it, not downloading it, it's legal, it will hold up. Especially since streaming technically is downloading it, you're just not saving it. You download it, watch it, and then it kind of deletes off your computer or your device. Um, so keep that in mind. This is not necessarily a um, safe way to watch your content. So, and again, you're an adult, I'm not gonna necessarily tell you how to do all this. You're gonna have to make those decisions. You wanna do it, that's fine. I'm not gonna stop you. But I'd love to know, what do you think about Dish's efforts? Do you think they'll be successful? Do you think they will not? So far they've been successful in court, but will they really be able to put a, uh, a dampen or cut back on Parsi in this realm. Let me know. All right, next up is probably one of the most popular stories from the past week. ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC are suing Lowcast. Uh, I think my only real surprise here was that, is this didn't happen earlier. Lowcast is a free streaming service that offers locals. Um, they're using a particular part of the copyright law that allows nonprofits to do this. They are run by a nonprofit they're actually run by a bunch of lawyers. It'll be interesting to see what happens with this. It almost seems like Lowcast deliberately wanted this to happen, right? Lowcast was built almost to get this lawsuit to try to create precedent here. Now, ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, and more are upset that basically Lowcast is offering this stuff for free online because they're using Nintendo to retransmit it and that uh, Dish and AT&T are supporting them. Dish had a close relationship with them. That's just kind of like, oh, we didn't have that close a relationship with them right now, but it was like a default app on the uh, uh, Air TV when you installed it. It was a suggested app, I should say. at t actually went a lot farther and made a $500,000 donation recently to Lowcast to help them continue to operate. Dish and at t have kind of used Lowcast in their pushback against the high cost of locals in their negotiations. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens here. I think this is really going to come down to, and I'm no lawyer, is did Lowcast actually follow the letter of the law with this particular, um, particular section that allowed them to go and offer this service as a nonprofit? Are they honoring the intent and in the letter of that law? Only a judge would tell that, and that's not going to happen overnight. This is going to take a long time. It's going to be a slow process, so keep that in mind. Um, for now, Lowcast has continued to operate it. And we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see what happens with this in the years to come. Because I got a feeling this is not going to be settled in a year. This could be like Aereo, something that ends up in the Supreme Court eventually. So we'll wait and see. But let me know, what do you think of Locas? Who do you think will win? And if you have any additional questions, let me know. Unfortunately, I'm not a lawyer. A lot of people were asking specific lawyer is questions that we can't answer. And honestly, I don't think anybody really knows. This is going to be kind of one of those things. What judge do we get? What kind of, um, how, what is that judge's interpretation of that law and how Locast is following it? That's all at this time we can say about what will happen with this lawsuit. All right, next one up. Uh, this week we did an update post about how many HOAs are illegally trying to block over their antennas. The FCC is very clear that you cannot prevent satellite dishes and antennas within certain reasonable limitations to be put on a private dwelling. Like if you own a home that's in an HOA, they can't prevent you from putting a satellite on that home. Uh, but many HOAs do try to do this. Now the problem with this some, sometimes comes down to the fact that you have to now go fight it, right? If you want to put an antenna on the outside of your home, the HOA says no, you're in the legal right as long as you're following the rules uh, that the FCC set out. For instance, there's certain size limitations. You can't put one of those big old massive satellite dishes on your roof. But like a typical regular size antenna, a typical dish or direct TV satellite is permitted. 
Um, but many people are finding it easier just to put it inside your attic. And I do understand that. Why pay for a lawyer? Why try to get the FCC involved? Why do this? Why do that? Run the risk of maybe them trying to um, do a reprisal attack on you and something else. But if you live in an HOA, you do have legal rights. And we have a post in the show notes down below that breaks out all of your legal rights, everything you need to know about that. So check that out. And I'd love to know, have you ever successfully fought an HOA on this? Um, and if you have, well, let us know your story. I'd love to hear from you. All right, last story up of the day, and this is another one before we get into some things to look for next week. This is another one that seems to confuse people. PBS and PBS Kids are coming to YouTube TV. PBS has said for a while they wanted to be on live TV streaming services. Now we've learned that YouTube TV will be the first one. Now the problem here I found is many people assume that when this goes live, all PBS's, all PBS Kids will be live. Could be all PBS Kids maybe, we'll see. But PBS was very clear that this will be, their deal allows locally owned PBS stations if they choose to go live on YouTube TV. I would expect this a lot like when PlayStation View and others started adding locals, where it was like a local here, a local there, one over here, and over the course of like a year or more, then we start seeing a vast majority of locals start showing up. I think the same thing will happen here with YouTube TV, where you may see a big group at first join and then like a handful here and a handful there and a handful over here. Because remember, a lot of these you place, or PBS stations are very small, independently owned and run basically PBS affiliates. So keep that in mind. Also, this doesn't mean that it won't come out to other PBS stations. We have heard for a while that PBS was looking at coming to more and more um, services, and I would expect that in the years to come, PBS will be on additional live TV streaming services. Which ones? We don't know. But I hope that answers your question, and I, I just wanna set expectations on that. All right, a couple things to look forward to next year, again, or next week, excuse me. We're not quite to next year predictions yet. Next week on Wednesday, Roku will be reporting their earnings number. We'll get a fresh look at Roku, maybe get an idea of what Roku's doing in the future. So keep an eye out on that. We'll also probably get some more information on subscriber losses from cable companies and more. So keep a close eye on this. We'll be reporting all week these numbers, but watch for Roku to have some news coming up. Well, I hope you all have a fantastic week. I hope this helps answer your questions about core cutting. I'd love to hear feedback from you. Again, a special thank you to everybody who's been subscribing. We're seeing record growth, best month ever in July. I really do want to say thank you to everybody who made that possible. Without you, none of that really matters. None of this would have happened in the end. So a special thank you. Again, don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow with a core cutting video and back on Monday with a core cutting today show, Monday through um, Saturday we do core cutting today, plus a, at least one daily video every day, like on Sundays when we don't do a show. So take care everybody, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, helps us a lot. We'll see you back here on Monday. Take care everybody.